So what so are we looking these, at right here? These are Egyptian tortoises. Unreal. It's been Producing. so long since I've seen any of these. So that's what's fun when you visit bread. other people and yeah, they're working with species that you're not working with. This is incredible, man. I love it. This is almost like a, a surgeon. Yes. It's clean. It's all good. Yeah. Wait a minute. You have baby Spengler on. Yeah, man. No way, Charlie. Hold you're a sleeper, man. Look at uh, this. Nice. Guys, you're about to witness the most huntingest turtle I've ever seen. Uh, he'll just take this rock and just, just let them snack. I can tell you what's in here. I'm thinking pancake tortoises, man. Oh my gosh, guys. There's not there's not a lot of people like that guy. He's one in a million, man. Show them this turtle. Yeah. Incredible. We haven't moved about 20 foot. You guys are getting a super sized video too. I love these enclosures, man. Oh my God. What do you mean you don't have to be in here? Of course he's got to be in here. This is my good buddy, uh, Fred, as you guys know. And we have been invited uh, by a gentleman named Charlie Moorcroft. And Charlie, man, uh, first time here, you bought some Chinese fox turtles off me years ago. And you just recently started the Moorcroft Conservation. Explain that to me Moorcroft real quick. Moorcroft Conservation Foundation. I'm okay. Terrible. I'm just, just you know. Yeah, don't worry. I, All right, so you guys, That's we're great. gonna hang out. Charlie's first time on the camp here, but he's created his own conservation foundation. But what's your day job? Okay. I'm a, a horse trainer, equestrian. I cool. teach kids to ride horses in show, and, and uh, this, is a, this is my passion. This is what I do. For me, this is not actually, this is separate than the foundation in, in some ways. The foundation's a opportunity to have a conversation, um, raise some money for other organizations. This this is going, this has been established. This is something that I've done through a lot of friends, whether it's Fred or TSA or the Turtle Room. This is um, awesome. And I have developed a nice collection of endangered animals uh, that I enjoy working with. Okay. Since I uh, started the foundation with a few friends to start conversations about, them, uh, about um, <coughs> conservation, environment, uh, using this collection to kind of expose them, start conversations, get some feedback, and just cool know, start people thinking in that direction. So what so are we looking these, at right here? These are Egyptian tortoises. Oh, wow. Those are two full-grown uh, adult egg-laying females, mm. 10 years old. These are great. And guys, like, what's really cool is we're inside, I would imagine, his reptile or tortoise room. It was the garage. It was the garage. But this is a species uh, to have in Florida. You do have to do indoors. Yeah, these are in a white container, uh, crushed oyster, which is controversial in Europe. They use more earth products. We, especially in Florida, I wanted something that dried fast and didn't didn't stay moist. Okay. Um, so these guys, uh, this is an adult male. Unreal. That is an adult male. <laughs> Full grown, 10 years old. It's been producing. so long since I've seen any of these. So this is a treat for me. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, mate, no, no, it's good. But go for it. I had no idea they were that nice. Isn't that cool? And yeah. that's what's fun when Hold you visit right? other people um, and a... they're working with species that you're not working with. When you can get hands on, you really have a better understanding. Look at this. A better understanding yeah. of the first species. First hatchling. Th this uh, is your first hatchling? Yep, born in September. That's oh. the, actually, these are the, oh, parents. The, yeah. She was having a little bit of She's a chat. She's having a little snack, but that oh. is um, a family a unit. Family. <laughs> That's so cool. There's dad, mom, and the offspring. Yeah, the Dude, how, yeah, yeah, look at that. Incredible. Yeah, not, they're not really concave, but definite tail difference. Yeah, oh, man, the tail, yeah, it's amazing. That is amazing. Snacking. So, I is, can't this, imagine is, is it Climani? Is that the Latin on Climani? Climani. Climani, okay, I always two say. Eyes nope, that one doesn't go in there. I think it goes the down there in the yeah, bottom. Yeah, they, I keep, there's two females here, a bunch of sub-adult females in this top area, which is nine wow. feet. Wow. And then the males uh, really do well alone. So I That's three, why they're alone. Okay. I have three adult males. Um, Look at this guy. In order to get them to breed, you kind of put them together and there's a little bit of a combat thing going on and then they are interested in the female. Kind of builds up testosterone, <laughs> similar to some of the other tortoises, but. Yeah, they really just ram each other and, and, and wow. get aggressive. When I, when I uh, first got the, the male and two females, they were living together and he would not breed them until these younger gentlemen came of age and gave him a little bit of, you know, pressure competition. Cool. And again, guys, check out how he's got it set up. It's perfect for the animal's needs. It's dry. He's got a hygrometer, you know, humidity uh, readers here. And we've got a hide, a little plant. Edible, I don't, it's some type of uh, edible. Um, 
something yeah, they can eat, a little yeah, salad. Yeah, um, yeah, I get, I get and then we've got a shallow water bowl, and then he's feeding them. Oh, what's up? There's oh, look heat. at this. Heat goes on every morning. It's on a timer for about two hours. Then the UVB. Dosking. This is incredible, man. I love it. I love getting, uh, you know, ideas, and it's really cool. You know, I, I don't do too much indoors, mm -hmm. um, but this is almost like, it's almost like a surgery, a, a surgeon. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's I, clean. It's all good. I went to McCarthy's. Okay. Went to McCarthy's. So Love that guy. Times, and and I looked at his room and I thought I could do something like that in the garage. Um, it's there's inspired. one air conditioner vent and everything. You know, it's never really clean enough according to what I want. Okay. It's a garage, but it's you know. But look, oh, this are these Spengler, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys, this is a treat. Last time I saw yeah. these, we were with uh, Chris Leone up in the Garden uh, Garden State uh, Tortoise. Um, these are, wait a minute, you have baby Spengler on. Oh, man. No way, Charlie. Yeah, this is, Fred, you're a one. sleeper, man. Check it out, Charlie oh, is just man. under the radar doing his thing here. Look at uh, this. Nice. Oh, nice. This is incredible black-breasted leaf turtles from Vietnam. I, years ago, got imports, and why I always cry about imports, guys, is without aggressive deworming and care, most of these die that you have born in captivity black-breasted leaf turtles is tremendous yeah awesome. i have these two uh maybe august and september how sick is this man yeah, man that, this is amazing i would love this is a species i always loved because but again another species that in my opinion cool, huh? doesn't do very yeah. well outdoors in florida because yeah. they mm -hmm. like cooler temperatures cool. high humidity but cooler um let's have a look at these adults man i love the setups <laughs> Very, again, these are setups that you guys can go out and buy. Um, you know, these are you know some Exoterra enclosures. But look at this: the Pothos plant, little philodendron there, and then how about the black-breasted leaf turtle? Oh, perfect! Yeah, this guys, you're about to witness the most huntingest turtle I've ever seen. Look at that! Bam! Oh, man. They have those big eyes for living in forest situations. These guys actively go out and hunt. Look at that. Beautiful, Charlie. This is, wow, what a treat this fantastic. is, man. Yeah. So do you manage this collection all by yourself? In other yeah. words, you, yeah, that's similar it's to how hobby. I do. Right on, it's that's so hobby. cool. Um, and it seems like you have things, look at that, grab the other one. Oh, oh it's gonna take off. Is this a male we're looking at? Female. It is a female, okay. That's actually the mother of those two young. I'm so psyched, Charlie, this is awesome. What a treat for me. I hope you guys are digging this. Again, look at what he's done. Look at what he's done with the, uh, the, the bark, some sphagnum moss. He's mixed these things together. Look at the depth. This allows the turtle to burrow and or lay her eggs. And a shallow water bowl. Just See, females like, uh, keep a little deeper for egg okay. laying. Males okay. are- Oh, look at that. Uh, not much, not, not but much, but put, yeah. So in, there's in, a male. In each one, actually, if you come over to this. Sure. Uh, you will, I'm gonna flip this rock. You will see uh, all sorts of perfect. So it's a bioactive uh, setup. Pill bugs, they call them, right? Yeah. What do they call? Yeah. Uh, what's their science? I don't know if you know their. I just call yeah, them potato bed. bugs or pill bugs, and that's just the bioactivity going on there. They're breaking down waste and eating yeah. everything. And they will they eat know, them as well? I will. Uh, my friend Anthony Pierleoni from okay. Turtle Room. He he's hooked me up with all a lot of the ideas and very and cool. Most of the animals that are well, most of Spengler. Um, he'll just take this rock and just take it and dump it into here with the babies and that makes and sense. Just let them snack. That is awesome, man. So why do I get excited about captive bred babies, you guys that are just joining us on this channel? No, because when you get captive bred babies, you're going to get a healthier animal. We're not taking anything from the wild. Um, if animals were imported years ago, at least they're now providing us with animals that are healthier and we're not taking anything out of its uh, natural environment. All right, wait, I can tell you what's in here. Guess. I, I'm gonna say with the flat rocks, I'm thinking pancake tortoises, you, man. You are, uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, escape artists. Really? <laughs> These suckers climb. <laughs> wow, this is cool. This is a young group. Oh, that's awesome. Again, so What's their like Mallow, Mallow, Searches, Tornariers, something. I, I, oh, I, I I'm bad. I'm bad at yeah. Latin Pancake. and math. Pancake toys. <laughs> oh wow, tortoise stacks. I love it, man. 
May I grab one? Yeah, for Is sure. Is that okay? Yep, then we'll wash our hands. We, yep, you I, got it. I actually, even before COVID, I was really careful about just- Gotcha. Well, what I found- are kept, you know, everything is- Gotcha. So with, in my experience um, with the TSA, years ago, we got a major, um, you know, smuggled shipment in mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. confiscated by Fish and Wildlife. So I spent a weekend in triage with hundreds of these and um they like all african tortoises they come loaded uh with a yeah. lot of parasites and we had to do a lot of workups more than half died uh the rest went into the tsa and um i actually personally was like i don't want to work with this because again i like keeping things outdoors sure this sure. does not do well we'll get to the outdoors i only have two species outdoors. oh but, really okay uh, but I, I like this i really like the small animals that you know they're, they're cool. quieter everyone's into the globs and adulterers <laughs> and uh <clears throat> sulcatas and everything which is great i'm just not that guy i, cool. I love this it's manageable they're endangered um you know i can i can manage it Very i always cool. want them to have a little bigger area but when you look at you know their their habits in a day how many hours they hide how much they they really are are never out they'll come out to eat come out to bask and go back in very cool and up here i have you're taller than me okay. you can reach in there and grab them all and the uh, yep underneath the I'm other one yep. this one over here gently so i try and make it again as natural as possible but easy for yep. you Oh my gosh, guys. These are offspring you've produced. No, these are uh, from a friend. I traded oh. some... Uh, oh my God. I, I traded some pieces <laughs> actually that I just okay. weren't going to work with. Um, uh, and got a pair of adult pancakes and Jeez. these are their offspring. Isn't that amazing, Fred? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The one fantastic. thing that you notice when guys, when you're holding onto a pancake is they're extremely flexible. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's amazing how squishy they are. They are very squishy and it's not from MBD. That's because they're designed that way because if you notice, see these flat rocks? These animals in their natural habitat will, they'll be uh, like outcroppings in the plains and that's where they congregate and they run into them and they hide and they can wedge themselves into small crevices where they cannot be removed in fact i'm going to take them out when i put this rock down because i don't want to accidentally squish anyone but look look where they go they just they haul butt to well at least that one little guy did. this guy seems to be just relaxing but they just kind of want to go to the nearest cover in Africa, everything wants to eat you, I guess. Man, that's so cool, man. Yeah, 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 man, and here. This is so they're really seen. cool. I, I, I love, you know, I, they're not as rare as the Pixis were, but I really, I, I just related more to the species. That's funny. There are different species that almost call to you to work with. Yeah, and and yeah. I, I appreciate what you're saying because um, I feel similar. And it's not about having, I always tell this to people watching, it's not about, oh, let me get every tortoise. You got to find the ones that you can yes. work with successfully, and that seems to be what Charlie's doing. You know, I, I tried these pancakes you okay. know, as an outdoor type. Yeah, not knowing any better, it was obvious they weren't doing well. Right. So, as you, I like outdoor and yep. burgers, outdoor. So, I would like to do these, but I'm not. Got I'm not it. that guy. So I'm not yeah. that guy either. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I wish I was that guy. I'm, I'm, I'm just this guy. There's not, there's not a lot of people like that guy. Oh. He's one in a million, man. We love yeah, the bread. Yeah. I just so, washed my hands, so. Okay. I, uh, I, I'll, I don't need to touch anything, so I'll just continue to hold this. One but, of um, the other, uh, we have occasional guests. This, this is not like McCarthy's. It's not open to the public. There's no real tours. It's a conversation. If people want to come and learn, I'll, I'll talk about this to anyone. Um, <clears throat> But w when we do have people come in and look through, I will show them this turtle, which is a Florida box turtle. Yeah. You know uh, what? <clears throat> Becoming more and more difficult to find. Yeah. Because captive. of how beautiful that thing is. And then it's you gorgeous. would see this, and then you would get to the Pixis, the spider tortoise, and they arachnoides, and they they are like, oh, it looks like a Florida box turtle. I'm like. Uh, not really, but okay, I'm with you on that. Okay. So this, uh, I just moved the, these guys to more terrestrial, um, and I'll put them in a tub with, with water and some pellets or worms or whatever. That's, that's, a, in there. that's a highly unusual, absolutely beautiful. That is. That's a really cool one. And this one, 
Uh, oh, wow. <clears throat> this one's a little bit younger, but living in water still, and uh, just you know, chilling out. They'll all go outside, but right now they're into they're immaculate. That's what I'm the, the captive uh, bred, immaculate. Captive bred, nothing wild. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But actually, the the story is this one was uh, produced by a lady down the road. Um, someone brought me an old male that was at Tractor Supply parking lot. And once Tractor Supply went in, it didn't really have a home, so you can't relocate them. So someone said, "What do I do?" Is in the traffic light. So I gave it to a lady down the road who has permits and everything, and this was one of the babies. Cool. So she said, "Do you want it in a rate?" And captive bred, it, it's good conversation. If someone definitely, wants to play with it's it, it's good because them. the people you have here live in Florida, and they may not know the difference between a Florida box turtle and some of these exotics um, that you keep here. And it's it's you, you know what's funny is. You keep talking about a conversation, and that is really where it all begins. You can yes. impact someone just with a little bit of education, and that's kind of what I hope to do with the channel, is just to keep people interested, and maybe we get some new viewers who have absolutely no idea about these animals, and that's fine. I love people that are willing to learn. Um, you don't need to know everything, because none of us here know everything. And I'm pretty sure none of you guys watching know everything also. Although the YouTube comments might say otherwise. But uh, I'm teasing, I'm teasing. Uh, anyhow, what, what were you looking for? There's one more in here. Okay. Just a different pattern. Okay. It's really yeah. fine. But, uh, but it's, a, it's a grab bag there. No worries, mate. Uh, so this cool. This right here, actually up here, is uh, Fred will know yep. what that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a, one that. Very good stuff, Chef. Yeah, we. We found the nest, dug them up. I gave half the eggs to Fred. I took half. This one will release. But nice. it's just a, again conversation piece. When people come, they can see native our native species. And these yeah. are some of my favorite turtles. I, uh, I love them. Yet. They're funny. They're they're active. They're incredibly fun to swim they with. They smell. I'd yes. Say, I'd say yeah. they smell. Yeah. But they're they're goofy. Yeah. Uh, and then. This one is something that you don't get to see very often. I'm gonna wash my hands again. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. Hold on, I'm going, that's, hold on. Is that, I, I'm trying to remember the Latin on it. It's a Asian box turtle. I believe it's McCordy. Yes, sir. Oh, ah. shut up. <laughs> Named after Mr. McCord. Doctor. Dr. Bill McCord. Um, he has, Incredible man. I've gotten to meet him uh, a few times at some of the different turtle and tortoise preservation group um, conventions. Um, very knowledgeable, has an incredible, or had an incredible collection. Um, so talk to me about this animal and tell everyone this why it's so special. Uh, they're just extinct. They're, they're, yeah. There's nothing left. This is owned by Anthony Perleone. Okay. I have some older ones that live up in Connecticut. They want to cool off in the winter. Florida, you know, this room's climate controlled enough that they don't want to, adults don't want to live here, and I don't want the pressure of trying to breed them. Gotcha. So he sent me this and basically said, raise it, keep it in your tub system, which I, I like how this works. It's easy, lots of water changes, you can watch them eat. You know, they're really personable, cool little animals. Yeah, I love and, my, I like the Chinese box. Well, there's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I've fun. Got, uh, another Chinese, uh, same thing up here, but Chinese. Yeah, it's very similar in habitat and care, um, but they are, they, they're very gregarious. They come to you for yeah. the food. Um, just a fun uh, turtle to work with. And actually just this past Sunday, or one of our Sunday videos, I, I highlighted these guys because um, for me, outdoors in Florida, very easy to maintain, even this on the cooler days. Really? It is? Yeah. yeah, awesome. That's ambulance, right? No, that's actually Flava well, Marginata. Yeah, that's yeah, that, that. Am, that's yeah. That. Ambinensis is the, the Asian one, that's the Chinese guy. But this would be, would you be able to grab this since you washed your hands? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to show them maybe if he sticks his head out, just a little bit of the difference. So superficially, it looks very similar to a Chinese box turtle. But if, when you look at that head, it's just very beautiful. And I think this animal was described in the food markets, wasn't it? When he found it, I believe it wasn't even found in the wild. It was found uh, him rummaging through Mr. McCord, Dr. McCord, rummaging through hundreds of turtles in the food markets and was able to describe this animal, got a few of them and got them back to the States where he's been able to breed them. But now- He does well with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. This animal, I, it just- This was produced by him. Incredible. This is, uh, we haven't moved about 20 foot. That's about it. And there's still so much to see in this room. 
You guys are getting a super sized video today. Than, this is another one, uh, but this is uh, Japanese. Flavo. Oh, the this Japanese flavor. Uh, I Evel actually. Evelyn AI. Oh, I don't. Um, that's a subspecies then? Yes. Southern Japan, I would imagine? Uh, I will. Would yeah, I have no that. idea. That's pretty cool. Anthony. I, you know, uh, the guys at the Turtle Room, um, I, I, I want to give you guys an apology because you guys have emailed me and I'm the worst on email. Um, but we will get together. I'm definitely interested. Uh, have you guys down. Uh, I know Anthony uh, hangs with Chris Leone. Um, really, really good dude. So I definitely want to see and talk to these guys and see all the conservation things they're doing with their animals. So uh, maybe a trip to the Northeast soon. You know, I am from good old Long Island and I do want to ride my mountain bike on actual mountains. So I'm going to get up there soon. But anyhow, I'm babbling. Sorry, that's pretty neat. We just got some Japanese Reeves turtles in, oh, cool. uh, which is neat, just a different subspecies. And so it's cool to kind of work with the different species or subspecies of these guys. Hopefully awesome. the turtle room will be the first donation that we, when we raise enough money, they'll be the first one that we fund. To help them out, so. right off. Good deal. They've been great to me and I love what they do and they're huge about education. All, all the groups are great, they're all different. Gotcha, very cool. Just a different, uh, Flavo. So, Flavo, Flavo. Yeah, I, don't worry, man. It's all Latin to me. Bowerai? Three yeah, strike? Uh, two Everglades oh, Look how beautiful uh, that is. This indeed. is a different yeah. one. The, these guys, um, and you know, these are mini snapping, in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, it, this, yeah, this, this, this is a mud turtle. turtle. Spicy. Yeah. yeah, this is a mud turtle. They stay a little smaller, look. they stay prettier. Oh God, look at that. He wants it. He wants the finger, man. And these guys, I'll show you where they live. I, I brought everything in just because I have a bunch of people coming in the next couple of days. And, cool. Um, but normally they're outside and grow at stuff and, you know. Awesome. I'm going to watch again because then- No worries. I think this is the one you should look So at. these are all more Spengleri. Okay, more Japanese uh, black breasted woods. I love these enclosures, man. Yeah, these are There's really guy, well done. Uh, uh, Chris, Chris from Sea Serpent. Sea Serpent, my buddy Chris. Yeah, he makes he my built, incubators. He built this one, and then I bought a knockoff on um, Facebook Marketplace. Okay. Uh, and I sent it down to him to amend. And it, it, if I would change it, I would have the plastic built up and less glass because that's a lot. I'm always trying to clean and vacuum, you know. Gotcha. There's a lot, and the turtles can get actually stuck there. Okay. But this actually is the big, these are, uh, <laughs> Uh, Japonica. These guys chilling over here. This is the biggest one I've, Wait I've ever oh seen. Oh my god. Or ever had. Male. Geomida Japonica. Japonica. Yeah. So this is related to the black right. Bristons, right? They're yeah. somewhat related to those guys. Yes, I haven't seen one of these in a long time. Um, that is huge. So similar habitat, right? Similar yes. biology. The animal does almost all the same this thing, but three it's three massive. Times the size. Yeah. And, um, but absolutely beautiful. That is really cool. So Geomida. All Japonica. of them are captive. This one, uh, I, I, I would imagine, I think this was a, the only wild one. It was part of a confiscation. Okay. It's going out the other way. <clears throat> wow. A little bit of a rougher life. You can just, you know. Yep. But still. Um, and not, not wow. maybe not as quite as attractive, but still an amazing. Oh, come on. I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that it's got a shell makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. And again, so she, really older nice female, came from, I believe, a confiscation and it was sent to me uh, just to kind of see if I could get them to breed. Cool. And then there's a really red one that Anthony Perleone sent me again. <clears throat> this one is, I think, amazingly beautiful. Ah, that's gorgeous. Red. So, really nice species and the perfect species to be housed indoors. Yes. In a climate controlled area. And I can see what you mean. You know, the management is impeccable here, man. Just really well done. It Clean actually and beautiful. It stays pretty, you know, uh, I'll tell you, uh, the first time I set the Spangler up, I set him up in one of these and I was going to make it so incredibly natural. And I raked all the leaves up from outside and I put in all these logs and it was beautiful and layers and hills and nooks and crannies. And I brought in, I don't know how many roaches and bugs. <laughs> I learned right away. I'm like, no. So th then things start going in the freezer first or, you know. So, so now I made it simple. These get ripped apart once a year. 
and start over. Awesome. Because they, you know, it's mulch, it's Florida. There are bugs, it's a garage. Gotcha. So uh, I don't well want to live with bugs. Gotcha, man. <laughs> hey, listen, um, is there anything else to see in this room? Because I'm thinking, guys, we have just done about 25 minutes of <laughs> hardcore turtle action. Uh, lots of information. So I think what we're going to do with this video is we're going to finish. We're going to continue to see what he's got in here. But I'm going to give you another episode from Charlie's home, uh, from his foundation. More, more le uh, excuse me, not leopards. More pancakes. These are the parents. So cool, man. That one can't. I don't know how. I don't know how you pyramided that, but I, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, but that's captive raised. Yeah, obviously. you've got to really work hard to screw up a pancake tortoise and pyramid it. But the animals, I don't know, sure it, it, it just, you know, it, I know it was captive raised. I know it was raised by someone who does a great job. I don't know what, you know, it just you know, was, that's it's interesting. The, and again, that is, you know, I shouldn't have said that. I screwed up. Personally, I didn't think that was that bad. But what happens is people freak out over pyramiding. People freak and out. And no yeah. one really understands exactly what causes it. It could be low humidity when they're um, hatchlings. It could be growing too quickly. There's so many things. And in my opinion, that pyramiding was not terrible. Um, no, no, but what I meant is uh, a, a pancake tortoise is already flat. So to get the scoots raised, like if you gave it like super pyramiding, that would be a true uh, screw up. Anyway, we got a couple of little cherry heads, I believe, or red foots. Yep, cherry heads. Cherry heads, okay. Yeah. There's one cool. still in the incubator, which I know you have, a t both of you guys have a ton. Who cares? This is my first one that I Congratulations. Covered. It's always exciting when you hatch the first of a new species. Yeah. I had a big yolk sac, so I kept it in the incubator on paper towels for a, quite a while. So awesome. luckily, we put it in a sink, we put it in a refrigerator, you know, we, uh, we tried to make this work. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, these are the incubator. I kind of keep it dark. Yeah. I'm a freak. I figure That's why okay. not keep Makes it sense, dark. Right? He's in this little tub. Let's see. We love baby tortoises. I'm hoping she, kinds. but never. Wow, that's a beautiful light one, man. Look at how light that is, Fred. Almost. Gorgeous. Almost ready. Nah, yeah. That's, that's nice. light. That's a nice light shell, bud. That is gorgeous. That that's going to be beautiful. a screamer. Wow. And it's not shy. No, they're really cool, man. Great little tortoises. I love them. So another day or so, and then I had a spot. question um, asked to me on Red Fits the other day. Okay. Um, maybe you guys know. What is it? What is the reasoning of the red dot on a red foot? Or the other, or the other foot? Is it a camouflage? Is it a learning to shoot predators? Or well, I don't know. I think it's camouflage. And I just, I didn't know how to answer that. Um, kind of like an eastern box turtle. Yeah. I mean, they're so um, beautiful, but what, why do they? What's the purpose? There must be a, um, a reason for the coloration. Most wildlife there is some. Either to deter predators. Sometimes it's it, bright colors will tell you that I'm not good to eat. Maybe right. they're mimicking toxic. like yeah. they're toxic or something, but I think it's just where they live. They live in very um, forested jungle conditions, a lot of flowers, a lot of uh, different leaves. So maybe they blend in better. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let I Fred know in the comments below. Uh, yeah. I'm looking for answers. All right. Fred's looking for answers. Help him out. What are your guesses? What are your thoughts? Let's do some hypotheses down there. Um, I want to thank Charlie. We're going to end this video right here. We've been yapping for about a half an hour. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I really, uh, it's a beautiful place, man. Thank you for allowing me to come in and show everyone. And um, where can they find out more about your foundation? I know we'll do something in the link in the description. I'm going to add that. Facebook, Instagram, okay. we don't have a website yet. It's, okay. it's all really, really new. Okay. You know, this has been around for uh, a while. It just keeps getting better and better, but the actual foundation fundraising is new. Um, you know, and it, it's again, it's not just necessarily support this place, it's to support like minded facilities. Cool. Uh, people who are doing bigger and better things than I can do. Awesome. I have a lot of friends up there, and I know how to help them out. And it's the Moorcroft Conservation, yeah. Conservation Foundation. Foundation. Okay, there you guys go. We'll have another video with Charlie, but we're going to go outside. So stick around. We'll see you guys soon on another episode of Camp Cannon. Thanks so much. Say goodbye to Fred. Yeah. All right, they said goodbye. I'll see you guys later. So long.